Okay, at this point, we should take a little time, consider the notation behind the derivative, because there's a lot of different notation out there. It often gets mixed up. I want to show you what you might be seeing in this volume and in others. Now, the standard notation I'll use is that when you've got a function y equals f of x, we use a vector to encode the rates of change of the inputs. Maybe I'll call that vector h, and its components are indexed by the inputs. Likewise, for the vector rates of change of the outputs, I don't know, I might use L, I might call it something else, but I will use the uh, matrix notation for the derivative. I will use DF to denote that linear transformation that takes H, the vector of rates of change of inputs, to L, the vector of rates of change of the outputs. Now, that's a lot of different letters floating around that can be kind of confusing. There's a, a different notation that you might see that we might use, where for the vectors of rates of change of inputs and outputs, I might use x dot or y dot. These will have components that explicitly reference the different inputs and use that dot over top to denote a rate of change. And instead of writing the derivative as df with those matrix signs, I might write it out in a partial derivative notation, saying partial y, partial x, where notice the y, the x, they've got those underlines. That means that these are uh, vectors. This is the multivariate derivative. This is the matrix of partial derivatives. It's the linear transformation that takes x dot to y dot. Now, if we consider this in a particular example where I'll, I'll mix up some of the notation that's used, this might help you get used to it. Consider the function f that has uh, inputs x, y, and z, outputs u and v. Let's say it's a simple polynomial function. u is x, y squared minus x squared z, and v is 3x, y plus z cubed. Then, what is the problem? The problem is, if the inputs to this function are, let's say x is two, y is negative one, z is three, let's call that input a, then I want to know how are the outputs of this function changing if the inputs are changing at rates negative one, two, and zero. So that means x dot, the rate of change of x, is negative one. x is decreasing at unit rate, y is increasing at twice that rate, and z is not changing at all. Now, to solve this, we compute the derivative. Let's consider the partials with respect to x, that's y squared minus 2xz, and 3y, respectively. Then the partials with respect to y are 2xy, and then 3x. The partials with respect to z are minus x squared and 3z squared. That's my derivative if I evaluate it at the input at which I'm interested in. At x equals 2, y equals negative 1, and z equals 3, I get a numerical matrix with numerical entries, and that is what I'm going to use to transform the vector of rates of change of inputs to the vector u dot v dot of rates of change of outputs. And this is going to happen through matrix vector multiplication. I take this derivative matrix, negative 11, negative 4, negative 4, negative 3, 6, 27, multiply it by that vector, negative 1, 2, 0, and I get the vector 3, 15. That tells me the rates of change of the outputs, u and v, at this point. That's a good example, but it's a little uh, abstract. Here's something a little more grounded. Recall the polar coordinate transformation that takes polar coordinates, r and theta, and gives you Euclidean coordinates, x and y, through the usual formula, r cosine theta, r sine theta. Let's call that function f. If we say that the radius is 3, the angle is pi over 3, we're increasing the radius at a rate of plus 2 and decreasing that angle theta at a rate of minus 2, then at what rates are the Euclidean coordinates changing? So compute the derivative of this. That's an exercise that we've done before. We get the partials with respect to r, and then the partials with respect to theta. If we evaluate that 2 by 2 matrix at our inputs at r equals 3 and theta equals pi over 3, we get the matrix 1 half 
uh, root 3 over 2 in the first column, and negative 3 root 3 over 2 and 3 halves in the second column. Now, I'm going to take that matrix, and in order to get the vector x dot y dot, the rates of change of x and y, I'm going to multiply that matrix by the vector of rates of change of inputs, that is r dot and theta dot, 2 and negative 2. A little bit of algebra gives me the rates of change of outputs as 1 plus 3 root 3 and root 3 minus 3. Okay, that's the algebraic solution, but can we, can we see this geometrically? Can we draw pictures of what is happening? Start by drawing a picture of the r theta plane, or rather half plane, since r needs to be positive. Consider the point at which we are at and look at the vector of rates of change of outputs obtained by adding together the, the r dot and the theta dot, those basis vectors. And now f takes your input to a certain output, Euclidean coordinates x and y. df takes the vector h of rates of change of the inputs to a vector of rates of change of the outputs. And you can really see how that is obtained through a linear combination of the image of the basis vectors, the columns of the derivative matrix. Now, at this particular location, at these rates of change, you can see that the rate of change of x is positive and pretty strong, and the rate of change of y is uh, slightly negative. The geometry matches what we've done algebraically.